Hello, I'm Roger Wakefield, Elite AP, the expert plumber, coming to you on YouTube Live. I love doing this. And to me, Mondays are fantastic because we get to come in and sit and talk about plumbing. And man, I've got some good questions in here. So I really do enjoy doing this. I love being able to talk to people, talk about plumbing, uh, maybe talk about my longhorns every now and then, even though they're after their second loss of the year. But I, I love talking about plumbing. Uh, Monez, man, I appreciate it. Uh, I love doing this. And, you know, the, the reason I love doing it is I love talking about plumbing. Those of y'all that know me know I used to be an instructor in the union. Uh, I enjoyed it. Oh, my God, I loved it. Uh, if we're not connected on LinkedIn, you know, go look at my LinkedIn profile. And hello, Miss Nicole Smith. How are you? Uh, and I'm glad you do. I, I, I'm glad that you love them. And if I have a hard time reading today, I don't have my readers on right now. We actually moved the monitor back a little bit so I can hopefully see it without them. Uh, but, you know, I may miss some stuff. So, you know, keep me keep me on my toes here, guys. But I love talking plumbing. I, I used to be, William, I sure do appreciate it. You know, I, I'm kind of running solo today. Uh, William, as you see, is, is there in the chat? Uh, William actually is my videographer. And, man, he took the day off to take care of some things. But the great thing is he came in this morning to help me get things set up. So, man, I, I'm glad it looks good and sounds good, Will. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I do appreciate all you do, brother. Uh, but, guys, I, I love plumbing. I love the fact that I get to talk about it. I get to help people, and I help people get into plumbing. I help people grow their plumbing businesses, and I just love talking plumbing. And with all the things going on right now in the plumbing industry, it, it's a great time to talk about it. How do y'all like this? This is my, this is part of my birthday present. Uh, this is my little YouTube live clock, whatever it is. It's a clock. It counts subscribers. It counts views. It hooks up to my YouTube channel, which luckily for me, William hooked that up for me. Uh, but it hooks up to my YouTube channel and it, it keeps me informed as to where we're at. So this is pretty cool. I know that we are almost at 12,500 subscribers. Those of y'all that I've told to tell 4,000 of your closest friends, I don't think you've done it yet because I hadn't had like a 4,000 jump in one day, but we keep checking. Uh, Larry Bostic, how are you? Uh, are all the plumbing codes and laws strict in Texas as opposed to other states? Larry, I think that they're, they're stricter here. Uh, and, and, and I say that we still use the IPC or UPC depending on where you're at. Uh, I've got different study guides that I, I talk to people about that are studying for the test. And the the fun thing about it is I love studying and, and especially plumbing. There's something about it. I've just, I've always enjoyed learning it. I've always enjoyed talking about it. Uh, I think that's part of what made me a good teacher is, is I really do love the industry I'm in. And the neat thing about it is I love sharing that information. There's a lot of things that I've learned over my years of practice as a plumber that I, I do enjoy sharing with people and getting to talk to people about it is really, really cool. The fact that it is, is it more strict in Texas? Uh, I don't know if it's more strict. I think it's probably harder to get your plumbing license, but me as a journeyman plumber, I appreciate that. I love the fact that I know that we're one of the most stringent testing entities that there is. And I know this because we have a lot of people come in from other state and some of these people I've helped arrange meetings where they could come down, check out our, our Texas state board of plumbing examiners and, and see what it is, the way we do it, the way we have a plumbing license law, we have the board rules and a lot of different things. So, you know, I'm not going to tell you Larry that it, that it's any easier or any harder once you get your license. But I will tell you this, I, I do think it's probably harder to get a license here, but that's something I'm also very proud about. Uh, Nicole Smith, are union plumbers paid weekly or bi-weekly? If, if I don't mind asking, oh, I don't mind at all. Uh, I love talking about the union. Uh, I love talking about open shop. The good thing about me is I've, I've done residential, I've done commercial. I've done 
service. I've done new construction. I've been non-union. I'm union. So I'm a good guy to talk to about all of it because I see the goods and bads of both sides. And me, I'm always trying to make the system better. So I see what it all is. And Nicole, what I will tell you is we're set up. We pay weekly. And I think most of the union contractors are. I believe that it's written so that they can go bi-weekly. But I don't know of any of the companies here in Dallas that are. All the union contractors here in Dallas are literally paying weekly. If you're commercial, I believe that you've got three days to make payment. So what that means is if pay period ends on Tuesday, you've got till Friday to pay your guys. So once the pay period ends, you've got three days that they get their check. So it's really a neat setup. I like the way it is. And I always enjoyed it when I was an employee. And, you know, that's my thing about the union is I've, I've enjoyed it from an employee's point of view, meaning I had pension, I had insurance, I had all the benefits of the union. And that was really good. So I was really proud of the fact when they came and asked me if I would be an instructor there. So th thank you for that question, Nicole. And that's what I'm here for, guys. I, I love answering questions. Uh, Mo, happy birth, happy belated birthday. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. It was actually last Tuesday, and, and man, we had a wonderful time. Uh, studying the IPC and the UPC uh, online and then joining your short course to get prepared for my students in July. Prepare for my, oh, studies in July. See, I don't have my glasses on. Uh, July 2020, thanks to you. Uh, man, I am glad that you are taking this on. This is a, a great profession. And I call it a trade. I call it a career. I, I call it things like that. But to be honest, plumbers are very professional. It is, we, we, we protect the health of the nation. And I take so much pride in that and the things that we do and how wonderful it all is. So, Mo, man, congratulations. I am proud of you. Josephine DeSmet, it's good to see you in here. I am actually, we're going to move this to four o'clock because some people have asked us if we could do it a little bit earlier. Uh, if if y'all agree with that, do me a favor, go down the bottom, give me a thumbs up. Let me know, you know, yes, uh, well, that, that's exactly what we like. And the, the reason that we do that is we, we did have a lot of people reach out and say, hey, can you start a little bit earlier? Uh, and, and whether you're watching live or the replay, you know, please go in there and leave me comments. Let us know what y'all think about this. But you know, if you like what we're doing, please give us a thumbs up. And I just want to let you know, as you see, uh, tonight's show is sponsored by Texas Green Plumbing. And don't get me wrong, they're not paying me to do that. I just get to wear the shirt. But I'm the owner of Texas Green Plumbing. And all my Roger Wakefield, the expert plumber shirts are in the cleaners because I need all four of them. I got to pick them up this evening. But I need all four of them because I fly to L.A. tomorrow morning bright and early, uh, going to a video marketing conference that is fantastic. And that's where I learned to do the things that I do. That's how I learned to get better at doing the things that I do. So Josephine, you made me think of that. I'm glad you're here. But yeah, I'm headed out tomorrow morning. Uh, Larry, I'm in the state of Massachusetts. And according to my instructor, uh, first class last week, he says, we are one of the strictest states in the terms of law. And, and you may be. And I know a lot of people up in Union 12, uh, Local 12. So you may be. Let me scroll back up because I don't want to miss any comments here. Uh, man, Boston's pretty serious about this. They, they really are. And I think that's fantastic. I love the states that take it serious in, in licensing and checking and inspecting and keeping up with that. Uh, it really disappoints me in a lot of states that don't even have a, a state license. And I'm like, are you not concerned about the people in your state? Because thank God Texas does have, because man, there's a lot of people here and I would hate to know they're out there without any licensing at all. Uh, Jackson Hood, been doing this for five months. Now I'm only 19 and work with two other guys, two older other guys. Good for you, man. Jackson, this is a great profession. It is amazing. Uh, you work here in Dallas. I like that. So my question to you is, are you doing residential or commercial service, new construction? Are you union or non-union? And a lot of times I ask people that just to find out that way I understand what kind of background you've got. What is it that you're learning or doing? And, you know, I didn't, 
I, and I'm not going to say I didn't. I knew about the union when I got in it, but I was misinformed about the way a lot of things are. And I think that's what's wrong with a lot of open shop people. They don't necessarily understand the benefits of the union. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not just sitting here preaching union, but there were great benefits for me when I got into it. So uh, that's why I always ask. Uh, didn't know you were in Dallas. What's your company? Uh, again, Texas Green Plumbing. We're in Richardson. We're off Arapaho Road, and we do residential service. We are a commercial or are a residential service union contractor. And I love recruiting for the union and helping get people in because I think they've got a great package in overall. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of open shop companies that I know that are doing things fantastic. And to me, it's all about the education and the training of the plumbers. And what is your company doing for training? Are you getting the training you need to learn more, to move up, to get better? Because we all know that you get paid more based on the value you bring. So you've either got to get out on your own and learn more. That's why I love making the videos that I make. Sorry about that. Or you have to join a training program. And it's not necessarily just the union. There's PHCC. There's CEFers in, Dal in Dallas. There's a lot of other training places. But let me know, are you getting what you need? Are you learning what you need to improve your skills to move up and do better? Okay, so let me see where we're at here. Jackson Hood gets off around two or three. If you're going in at you know four or five, that's really good. Uh, Nicole Smith, I retired out of the military. Before that, I completed a pre-apprenticeship in electrical. Now have been looking at getting back into the trades. However, not sure if electric or plumbing. And Nicole, I've got that all the time, or get that asked all the time. Where are you located? Uh, where are you located? And what kind of electrical did you do? I love plumbing, but if you've got an electrical background, it may be easier for you to get a license and make more money there. Or if you want to, if you want to get into plumbing, and you can still get your electrical license, man, that would be great to be able to say you're a master plumber and electrician. I wish that's something that I would have done a long time ago. Now, as you can tell by all the gray, I'm kind of old. But, man, that would have been fantastic. Robert Parks, I'll be 32 in November and looking to switch fields. How long does it take to become a plumber? Uh, Robert, again, I'll ask, where are you at? Here in Texas, it takes two years to become a tradesman, which means you can come to work for me as a service company. Uh, after two years, you get a tradesman license. You act, can actually go out and do plumbing in residential homes. If you want to do commercial work, it takes four years to get your journeyman. And if you go through the Department of Labor training program or go through a Department of Labor training program, you can get your master's in one more year after your journeyman. So there's a lot of different things to look at and how you want to go and, and where you want to end up. Uh, I do have, and my phone may ring tonight, guys. Uh, I'm the only one in the office, and I would, uh, I'm just kind of keeping an eye on it. Uh, everybody's off. It it started raining here a little while ago. My guys finished up early. They got out just a little bit ago, which are normally off by 4.30, and it's just after 4 now. And I told my CCR, my call center representative, to go ahead and take out, so she did. But here's the thing is, it's going to take as long as you take to be good. You can go to work open shop, but you've still got to take so many years to get where you want to be. But I've got an online course. It's called The Plumbing School. Uh, you know, Check out one of the videos. Go back and look at that because I ask people the questions and I give them information to help them determine, do you want to be residential or commercial? Do you want to do service or new, <clears throat> new construction? Do you want to be union or non-union? Sorry about that, guys. Fought that for a little bit last week, too, and man, I'm still not over it, but I'm working on it. So anyway, let me get back to where I'm at. Jackson, thinking plumbing is better more most of the time. <coughs> I'm not going to say it's more money, but, but I'll tell you what. I love plumbing. It's something that I, I do. I take pride in the fact that, to me, it is a profession. 
And what I mean is we really do protect the health of the nation. And I think that's such a big deal. Uh, and, and Jackson, I don't know that I've seen you in here before, but, but I'll tell you this. <coughs> Guys, if you hadn't done it yet, do me a favor and subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on the notifications for when we go live and when we put out new videos. I always try to go live on Monday afternoons. That's why I'm flying out early in the morning instead of tonight to L.A. Uh, I really wanted to get, get down there a little bit early. Uh, one of my consultants and mentors is, is doing or did a live class yesterday and today, and I really wanted to be there for that. But we've had problems fighting with Wi-Fi and connection services. Those of y'all that hadn't seen me over on LinkedIn, go over there and follow me. Uh, watch what I do over there because it's a little bit different than what I do here. But I still love talking about plumbing. I love talking about the business of plumbing and networking. So let me get back to some questions here real quick. Uh, Robert Parks, and what are the necessary steps to become one? Man, the first thing is you you really need to <laughs> need to go to that plumbing course, that, that mini course I did. It's free, guys. Go over there and take it. It'll ask you what kind of plumber do you want to be. And the reason I say that is I started out commercial, construction, non-union. I've ended up residential, service, union. So a complete 180-degree flip on all three of them. But to be honest, I didn't know what all options were out there. That's why I like putting this out first, and that's why I make it free. Look, here's a choice to get in here and learn some things. So, you know, I put that out there to help people. That way, it helps people decide what kind of plumber they want to be. Once you decide what kind of plumber you want to be, then, you know, if you're wanting to go commercial, I, I recommend the union. Uh, now, there are going to be big companies around that compete, but most of the union contractors get the bigger jobs. So what I would say is look and find out what kind of plumber you want to be. If you want to be residential, and that's what you determine, look on TV. Who's advertising in the area you want to work in? And contact them and talk to them and say, look, I, I want to learn to be a plumber. What do I have to do to come to work for you? It's different for different people. I love bringing in apprentices that have no experience that can be trained. But it's also nice to get in an apprentice that, that has a year or two, that understands some things. Maybe that's been doing residential service and can really come in and be beneficial, and that can help a lot. So there's good sides to both of them. So let me see. Ah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, Josephine, cool. Have a great time at Vid Summit. Oh my God, I will. Josephine, it's gonna be great. Uh, yeah. Dean, uh, Daryl went online the other day and did this question and answer session for it. It was great. Won some prizes on there. I love Vid Summit. I love YouTube. Y'all, th this is a great platform, and it's a lot of fun. Like I said, if you hadn't seen me on LinkedIn, check over there because I do things a little bit different. But go over there and follow me. And between the two of them, you can really get some good information here. Jackson Hood uh, depends on if you know a guy. You know, so sometimes it's nice to know somebody. But but I will tell you this. Remember, when I was an instructor in a union, I would always start out my first year of classes and ask them, look, how did y'all hear about the union? How did you get in? And believe it or not, not very many people were related to anybody or knew anybody. They just did some research, found out about plumbing, and wanted to get into the union. Now, I've got a video on here that talks about the union and how do you find them. Uh, and there's a link in it. How do you find out the union that's close to you in case you want to talk to them? So I put that information out there for you. Mo, I see you took that one back. The uh, balls. I'm doing plumbing in college in the United Kingdom. Fantastic. Jackson Hood. Uh, living on the job as I got my apprentice license. Man, I love the fact. Okay, and Jackson, that's how I started. Now, we didn't have to have an apprentice license back then, but you literally went to work for a plumbing company, and you were an apprentice until, I think at the time you had to have 6,000 hours. You had your master sign off on the fact that you had that much experience, and then you went and took the test. So really neat information. Uh, and, and I'm sitting here looking at my screen. So, so I, I want to ask you all something. 
Uh, and give me a comment down here because I've got people talking to me now wanting to sponsor us on social media. And it's been really good because there's been some great conversations. But my question to you is, would it bother y'all if, you know, right back here there was a sign that maybe talked about a sewer machine or a plumbing supply or anything like that? Because I've got some really great people that are wanting to talk to me and do some things. And I never really thought about that when I first got into it. But after I did, I thought, you know, if I ever got the sponsorship, that would be really nice. It helps me update cameras, computers. But, you know, we've also talked to them about putting product placement on the wall. As you see, I've got one of my Yetis back here right now. I've got a bunch of LinkedIn stuff. I've got my Gary V shoes. I mean, I'm telling y'all, I really like this thing here. Uh, I don't know how well y'all can see it. It looks pretty good from where I'm at. But that thing's pretty cool, and I think Will's put a link in here before to it. But that counts all my YouTube stuff, like, you know, views and subscribers and, and watch time and, and stuff like that. It is really cool. So, anyway, we enjoy that. But leave me a comment. Let me know if subscribers had or sponsors had a, had a sign up. If, you know, I got on like I did today and said, hey, this video is brought to you by Texas Green Plumbing which I happen to think is one of the best plumbing companies in the Dallas area. If you need a service plumber, please remember to call Texas Green Plumbing. Would that bother you if I had sponsors doing things like that? Because, guys, that helps me support the fact that I'm doing this. So, anyway, just a question I thought wanted to ask you about. Mr. Parks is in Vegas. So, I'll tell you what, Mr. Parks, there are a lot of plumbing jobs going on in Vegas, and I know because I was done with the local the other day, and we sent some plumbers to Vegas, uh, either just did or were just fixing to, but I don't know, from Texas, fixing to. So any, anyway, I know that there's a lot going on there. Uh, man, you can find a job there if you really want to get into it. That's great. Nicole, I'm located in Florida. Congratulations. My plan is also getting my BS in construction management. Good for you. I started doing that, and I'll tell you what, I loved it. Uh, I love, you know, learning how to manage people, learning how to find out what their needs are, uh, learning how to make changes, paradigm shift. There's a, I believe in knowledge, and I think knowledge is the greatest thing that we can ever give ourselves. So that's why I make these plumbing courses to help people invest in themselves. I believe in that, and I think it's huge. So, man, the fact that you're in Florida, congratulations. I love it down there. Uh, God, I've been to Anaheim a couple of times here lately. Uh, it, it's, it's, uh, I said, and I'm Orlando, uh, I love California too. Anywhere where it's warm, there's water and sand. It's a great spot for me. Uh, so let me see. You know, you, you want to pursue a trade. I can't tell you which one's more lucrative. They're both good. They're all good. And I say both. I, I look at plumbing and electrical as probably the two big ones. HVAC is fantastic, especially down in Florida. There's, there's so many different things you can do. Check into all of them. Look at them and find out what's going to give you the best education, what's going to give you the knowledge to help you grow and learn and do more if you want to. Uh, man, it's really hard to compare them. I think plumbing is the best, but of course it's because I'm a plumber. Uh, I've got a video, pl plumbing versus electrical and plumbing versus HVAC. And there's a lot of trash talking going on in it. But you know what, guys? It's all good. There's nothing bad. Uh, electricians and plumbers give each other a hard time on the job. But you know what? We all work together and we most of us get along pretty good. So it's kind of great. Uh, also learning gas lines. Absolutely. Jackson, you know, here in Texas, the plumbers are responsible for gas. Uh, the gas company, the gas purveyor, runs it up to the meter. The plumber's responsible from the meter to the house and to every outlet. So normally when people call and say, I have a plumbing leak or a gas leak, what they literally do is go out, test it. If there is a leak, they lock it out. Tell them to call a plumber to test it, inspect it, pull a permit, make sure everything's right before they turn it back on. So a lot of things there. Uh, Mo, I went to work with the best residential plumbers in New Zealand learning as much as I can uh, take from your videos and applying those skills. Fantastic. Practical, practic uh, practically around the house. Yes. Service work pretty much. That's good. 
Uh, practice around the house all you can. Uh, we're literally looking at putting together a digital course and teaching people a lot of these things. And that's one thing that I thought, look, if I can teach somebody how to pull and reset a toilet the proper way, they can practice at home, they can go buy the parts for relatively very cheap, but then when you walk into a job interview and you can tell somebody, look, I know how to pull and set a toilet. I know how to rebuild a cartridge on a tub and shower valve. I know how to do these things. I think that would be huge. And that's what we want to put that course together for. So, you know, let me know what you think. Uh, Josephine, please don't die. I want to meet you. I, I don't plan on dying. Uh, don't know what that brought that up, but I don't plan on it. I am excited about going to Vid Summit. Going to have a blast. And I can't wait to meet you too, Josephine. I know you'll be there one day. Uh, living good. How long have you been in plumbing? I've been in plumbing since about 1980. Uh, it was late 80. was talking to a friend of mine. Ended up going to work with his brother. Uh, and I, I say late 80. It was the first semester of junior. So it was the first semester of my junior year, which would be 1980. Uh, ended up going to work with him like December of that year. And man, it was great. I quit school. Don't do that. I'm not telling you to do that. But eventually I enjoyed, realized I enjoyed plumbing, but I went back and graduated with my class, which I'm glad I did because then I was able to get my plumbing license because you've got to have a high school diploma or GED. At least you did have. They're, kind of, they're working on that now. Josephine, I'd love to go. Want to save up for next year? Fantastic. So tomorrow I'm going to try and get my contract renewed at my student job. Good for you. <clears throat> and Josephine, that's the deal is start looking now at what it's going to cost you and, and put that up each month. You know, break it up into 10 payments, not 12. Break it up and put that much money up. And, and then if you can do it in 12, then you've got extra money for spending money when you get to LA. But <clears throat> that's fantastic. I, I'm glad that you've got goals and you're trying to do that. Law of attraction, you got to love it. Josephine, absolutely not. You deserve to earn money for how you help everyone. And, and, and I'm working on it. So thank you, Josephine. I appreciate that. Uh, shows your progress and results, honest opinion. Thank you, Mo. I appreciate that. Uh, plumbing explained. What's your favorite type of plumbing to do? And what is your least favorite type of plumbing to do? Man, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, I love residential service because I love helping people and to see, to see the gratification on their face when you go out and you take care of a problem they've got and you are really able to help them better than that. You get a call and say, Hey, another plumber came out and, and it's, he says, it's going to cost, you know, 10, $20,000 to fix this. And you go out and, and it's a, you know, $300 problem guys, there's so many crooks and thieves in this industry. If you will get into it and do the right thing and always try to do the right thing. And I was in a class one day and I heard one of the guys teaching. He said, learn to fall in love with your customers. And guys, I love my customers. I, I love my subscribers. I love the people that I get to help. And it makes me feel good. So, but what he said is, if you love your customers, you will always do the right thing for them. And I try and look at every customer that way. I love the fact that they're giving me the opportunity to fix their plumbing, that they're giving me the opportunity to help take care of them. I get an opportunity that, that some people may not get. And we've got a great reputation. We've got great online reviews. Uh, Y'all, uh, like I said, Texas Green Plumbing, go look at our website. We get good reviews. We try to do things right. So my thing is I love the residential service. Man, what part do I not like? Probably, probably doing like clean room work. And, and I did that for a long time. It's so slow and meticulous. And you got you to gotta put a clean suit on. You, you go in. It, it takes, I mean, it can take an hour to get in and an hour to get out for lunch. And, and I mean, you start looking at, okay, it's four hours to get in and out of a work area. That limits your day. And man, I just, I'm a go-getter. So I love to stay busy and do the things I do. So, man, that was a great question, though. I appreciate that. Uh, 
Joseph, hey, now I understand. Thank you so much. Okay, so Nicole Smith, the UAE Plumbing Union in Jacksonville, Florida. I'm not sure if they're still accepting apprentices. Uh, the website seems outdated. Uh, and, and you know what, Nicole, it may be. What, what I would say is call them, contact them, let them know you're interested. If they tell you, well, we're not taking applications until next August, what I would do is I would go to work as a plumber's apprentice or helper and start learning everything you can. Go back and binge watch every video I've made. Learn anything you can about plumbing and, and learn it well. Don't just learn to do plumbing. Learn to do it the best way. Learn to always do it the right way. That way you never second doubt yourself. You never question yourself and you are always trying to do the right thing. That will make you an amazing plumber. Man, I love the questions and the feedback I'm getting tonight, guys. Thank you so much. Alan Dury, I've been watching your video, your vids constantly for a week. You have inspired me to get back into plumbing after a four-year hiatus. Oh, man, that is fantastic. Uh, I appreciate that. I, I love that I can help someone. And, guys, that's why I do what I do. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm hoping to get sponsors, and maybe one day I'll get paid to do this. But, man, right now, this is what we do just to help people. And if we can do anything to make the world a better place, man, why not? Uh, Alan, man, I really do appreciate that. I said Alan. I think it's, yeah, Alvin. Man, thank you so much. Alvin, where are you from? Will you please let me know? Uh, okay, Mo, that sounds great. Thanks. Education is the key. Visual, visualizing the job is awesome. Uh, cheers for the heads up on your future work. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, man, I'm always trying to do things better. And one of the things is, you know, we, we're looking at creating classes about how to help people either get into plumbing, how to help them become better plumbers, or how to market their plumbing company. Look at what I've done here on YouTube. Look at what I've done on LinkedIn. You know, a year and a half ago, nobody was really doing this, at least not doing it what I would consider very well. So we walked in and decided, look, we want to do this better than anybody else. We want to learn it. We want to grow it. We want to improve it. And, and that's what we're trying to do. And apparently it's working because, you know, I've had conferences reach out. I've spoken at some of the largest video marketing conferences in the world about how I've grown and what I've done. So, and I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, plumbing explained. I noticed your sub count has gone up quite a bit in the last few weeks and months. What do you think helped you the most increase your sub count? I'm 600 subs away from being able to be a partner. Man, fantastic. Uh, here, here's what I'd tell you. <clears throat> Learn to do things right and keep doing it. Don't, uh, number one, I've got a complete process. I was talking to one of the sponsors that called the other day because, you know, a lot of people think this is just easy. We just get up, make a video, and boom, we get a lot of subs. And the truth is we study social media. We study YouTube. We study LinkedIn. We, we actually study other platforms that we're looking at, but those are our two main things. We study Facebook a lot too. I think what happened is, about a year and a half ago, I learned I wanted to be on YouTube, and we started doing it. About five or six months later, I started realizing I need to get better. I need to hire the right people. So I hired coaches. I hired consultants. I took mastermind classes, and I started putting everything together that I've learned and started making it work. And right now, uh, we are at about 100 subs a day that we're growing. <clears throat> And that's really good for a small channel like me. I mean, just a few months ago, we were or a couple of, I'll say a few months, a few weeks ago, uh, actually less than a month ago, we were at 10,000 subs. That means we're growing very well. I mean, we're growing at 1% a day. That, that was huge. But our, our growth, our minutes watch time, our views, everything is growing like 50% a month. So I think that what we're doing we figured out the system. We figured out how to make it work. All the things that we're doing, we're doing right. 
and we keep trying to improve everything. We don't just say, okay, look, we're, we're doing good now. Let's stop. We want to keep getting better. That's why I asked earlier about the subs, you know, or sponsors. I'm sorry. You know, would it bother y'all if there was a sign back here of a sponsor? Uh, would, it, would it bother you if I said, hey, today's show is sponsored by Texas Green Plumbing? You know, if you're in the Dallas area and you need a plumber, Texas Green Plumbing is going to come out and take care of you as good or better than anybody else. I mean, would that bother y'all? Uh, you know, I've got stuff around here all the time. These aren't really sponsors. I know I've got LinkedIn stuff. Uh, I know I've got a pipe wrench up here. These guys aren't paying me anything, but I've got people now reaching out to me because of how many views, how many subscribers, how many likes, how many comments, how much engagement, all the things we're getting that now they're reaching out saying, hey, we want to sponsor your channel. Would that be a possibility? So, so we are talking to them. But that's why I ask y'all if it would bother y'all. Uh, I watch a lot of videos from other people that are sponsored. It doesn't bother me because I understand that's how they get paid to do what they do. YouTube doesn't pay you a whole lot. YouTube makes you a partner and you make money. But where you really make money is through sponsorship. So that's why I wanted to ask anybody or ask y'all before I ever did anything. Uh, so Plumbing Explained, I, I hope that answers your question. Uh, that That's how we're doing it. Uh, we're trying to do things right and we keep working every video we make to try to get better. So thank you. That's the exact same reason I enjoy residential service and repair. Good for you. man. And, and it is, it, it is the most awesome feeling to help people. And, and whether it's doing it right here or whether it's going out and, and taking care of customers at their houses, I love that feeling of, you know, man, just the, the feeling that I get from helping them. It is fantastic. Uh, Nicole, I'm not sure if pursuing my degree in construction management online and pursuing a trade at the same time would be difficult. Uh, I just want to maximize my results for the future. Nicole, what I would tell you is I was a superintendent on a huge job while I was doing online school for my construction management course. And I'll tell you what, it can be done. Uh, what I would do is I would block out my Saturdays and Sundays and say, these are the days that I'm going to do my online training and stuff. So I don't know if you're in a set course at a specific time, but I was able to do it. And I would say, look, if, if you've got the energy and you can put the time in and get it done, you'll be glad that you did. It, it'll make you feel fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, guys, if y'all like what I'm doing here, do me a favor, go down there in the bottom and give me a thumbs up. and. That way, you know, I at least see, you know, hey, look, people are getting something out of this. I do appreciate it. It, it makes me feel better. But it, it also lets YouTube know, hey, look, that this guy's doing something right. People like what he's doing. And that helps them put us out in front of other people. So hopefully we get found better. Uh, Nicole, goal is to have your own construction company. Nicole, are you wanting to stay in Florida? That would be my first thing. And what all does it take to have a construction company there? What kind of licensing? What kind of God business plan ideas? What do you need to put together to do that? Because I think it's great. And I love the fact that, that you're wanting to do that. Uh, and I, I do. I, I really think that's fantastic. I also love the idea that you're talking about becoming a plumber because plumbing is one of the most expensive things about construction. And the more you know about it, learn about it, and can do, you know, you may be able to have a plumbing company and a construction company. So always look way outside the box. Uh, let me see here. They'll go power. Have you ever gotten sick from working? No. Or do you know anyone who's gotten sick from fecal matter exposure? No, actually, I don't. And, you know, one thing that I talk about is, is safety a lot. And if you're in a position where you think you could get fecal matter, urine, anything like that on you, man, my guys have some bright green rubber gloves. And I've got a pair over there I, I may get in a minute. But some of y'all that have seen my videos have seen me where I've got my lime green gloves on. Uh, we've got booties. We've got goggles. Man, protect yourself. And I tell people that all the time. Uh, I have had people come to a construction job and say that we all had to go get hepatitis shots because somebody else was sick, but never anything from plumbing, at least not that I'm aware of. So 
They go, Power, I would say no. I have not seen a problem there. <clears throat> Plumbing explain. I don't even take lunch, brother. I know the feeling. Uh, put it this way. It is 20 minutes till 5 o'clock here in Dallas. I haven't eaten all day. I got up. I ran in. Uh, I'm two plumbers short right now. So any of y'all that know a service plumber in the Dallas area, man, I'd love to talk to him. I'm looking for a great plumber, not a good one. He's got to be good looking, kind of like me. Uh, maybe not look just like me, but good looking. Uh, man, smell good. Know what he's doing. Dress nice. I want the best plumbers in town. And, man, I pay good, and I pay good for them. So y'all know a plumber in Dallas, a service plumber with experience? Please have them give me a shot. Okay, so nobody getting sick. Uh, yeah, let's just slow you down. I get it. Plumbing explain, man, I, I think me and you are on the same page. Uh, live in the moment. When do you think you'll retire? You know, that's a good question. Uh, actually, since I've started growing on YouTube, we have looked at the idea of possibly selling the plumbing company. Uh, we're a good plumbing company. We've got great reviews. We've got, uh, man, we've got good things in place. We are part of groups that, that help us improve what we do, that help us monitor what we do. And it's, it's a great thing, and I, I really do believe in it. You've got to hire the right coaches. You've got to get the right people to get where you want to get. But now that I'm growing on YouTube and there's opportunities there to, to possibly have sponsorships and, and to spend more time helping plumbers, uh, we have looked at the idea of possibly selling the company. And it's a good company. Uh, we, we, we run two trucks. It's, it's, it's a good business to be in. I don't know that I'm going to retire is in the way you're thinking of. We do have an idea. Uh, my wife and I both work with people networking to teach them how to grow their business. Uh, those of y'all that have seen the videos with Julie in it, she's an etiquette and protocol consultant. She's actually in Houston working tonight. Uh, she'll be home tonight, and then I fly to LA tomorrow. So and we've got kind of a crazy schedule. But we both love networking and helping people. So we've invested into Master Networks in Houston. We're partners down there. Uh, we want to go down there and help them grow. But at the same time, I've got people down there saying, look, you need to move a plumbing company down here. So we're looking at expanding and selling all at the same time. So there's so many different options. When I retire, I don't see me just sitting at home. I want to be out helping young people grow their businesses. I want to help people, and I say young, people younger than me. Uh, I've got people from across the country right now reaching out to me about social media, asking me to put together a course and teach them to do what I do. And, and we've looked at that opportunity. And there's so many things going on right now that, that to be honest, uh, man, living the moment, I don't, I don't know. I don't see retirement in my near future. I'm 56, just turned 56. I could see me doing this another 10 or 20 years as long as I'm doing what I'm doing and having fun. And when I say, say that, I mean, I may be in Houston helping people learn to network and grow and, and start businesses that way. Those of y'all that want to learn more about networking or social media thing, you know, leave me a comment, give me a shout, send me a, a, a message, DM me, uh, send me a private message and say, Hey, look, I, I really want to talk to you about this or whatever. Uh, man, I do. I, I love helping people. So I don't know that I'll retire anytime soon. But you never know. The, the right person comes along, buys me out. Uh, the right company offers to buy my YouTube channel when it gets big enough. Man, you, you never know. But I don't see me walking away from everything. I literally see me going down to Houston or a couple of other areas that we've looked at and literally help people grow their business. I love doing that. Uh, so guys, like I said, if you like what I'm doing, please go down the bottom, give me a thumbs up that lets me know, Hey, look, I, I need to keep doing what I'm doing. I've got somebody's attention. It also lets YouTube know that we're doing good things and they help put me in front of other people. So please take just a second, go down there, give me a thumbs up. If you hadn't done it yet, please subscribe and ring the bell. Uh, everything we do is, is based on 
subscribers and view counts and minutes watched and things like that. Now, if you're just here because you accidentally, you know, fell under Roger Wakefield, the expert plumbers YouTube channel, you know, don't subscribe. If you're not going to come back and watch videos, I want you to watch and learn and see what we're doing. But I also do this so it'll help you. And I tell people all the time, tell me what kind of videos you want me to make because I want to do things to help every one of you. And I love it. I uh, got some thumbs up here. I love that. Uh, Josephine wouldn't mind the ads. You know, and, and you're right, uh, Josephine, and that's the biggest deal. Everybody that starts talking to me about sponsorship, the first thing I do is go do research on their company. What is their mission statement? What is their vision statement? What is their culture about? I'm not going to, matter of fact, one, a supply house company reached out to me. And one of the things they said was, you know, we don't want you to do anything you don't want to do. And I talked about shark bite fittings. I don't like shark bite fittings. And they said, well, then we would never ask you to do that video. And I'm like, good, because I wouldn't. So that's what I'm saying. Uh, Sheila, I like that. Like, comment, and share the channel. Guys, if you got, if you know anybody that you think would be interested in watching this, uh, one thing I do when I'm watching my people, I'll take a selfie of me watching it, and then I'll post it on Facebook and say, hey, here's a link to this channel. You know you can go down to the bottom and click on the button that says share. It'll give you a link. You can put it out on, on Facebook, Twitter, things like that. If you'll tag me, uh, I think I'm on Twitter, underscore Roger Wakefield. Uh, Facebook, you can tag me Roger Wakefield. Uh, but either look for Roger Wakefield or the expert plumber. See if it's me. I'm the guy with the good looking mustache. And tag me. And I'll make sure I go in and comment on it and things like that. Uh, but man, if you do that, that's fantastic. Because a lot of y'all may not be all interested in becoming a plumber, but maybe you know somebody who is. And if they saw this channel, they'd be like, wow, that is teaching me what I need to know. So, yeah, Sheila, thank you so much. I, I appreciate you putting that in there. All right. I got to scroll back up to see where I'm at. Uh, have you ever gotten sick? No. Talk about that. No. Plumbing explained. Thank you. Live in the moment. Ah, Houston. There we go. Alvin Day, Houston, Texas, 22 years old. Commercial, residential, and service. Alvin, that's fantastic. I literally drove home from Houston yesterday. Uh, my wife's there tonight. We were over in the Galleria area. Matter of fact, I did a place called Bubba's Hamburgers under the highway, like right under it. Uh, tell me if you've been there because that was fantastic. Uh, Larry, is it true that there's a wedge between union and open shop? I'm not going to say there's a wedge. A lot of open, pop, open shop people don't understand union. A lot of union people don't understand open shop. That's why, man, to me, I'm a great voice for it. I've seen both sides. I've been in both sides. There's pretty much not anything plumbing I can't talk a lot about because I have been residential, commercial, service, new construction, even industrial, union, non-union. Guys, I see the benefits of both sides. And I'm a good guy to talk to about it because, and I'm not prejudiced to one or the other. I really don't care. I just tell you what I see and what I think's best for me. But after I listen to you talk, I may tell you something different for you. So there, there kind of is a wedge in there, but I, I don't know that it's anything that it's, it's not going to cause any problems. I remember the guy when I was young working open shop telling me, oh, you never want to be union. You know, th they stand over your shoulder and tell you how many fittings you can put in a day. And if you put in too many, you know, they're going to be rough on you or mean to you or something like that. And you know what? I've been a union employee. I've been a union superintendent. Uh, and now I'm a union company owner. Uh, guys, it, it's all the, the union people want to get the work done. They, they, they pride themselves on the fact that they learn through education and training, meaning they sit in school two nights a week for about five years. Guys, there's a lot of pride in the union that, you know, I wish I saw more of an open shop. Now, don't get me wrong. I spoke at the the rally at the Texas State Capitol, and there were about seven thousand to seventy five hundred plumbers there, and it was amazing. You know, plumbing is a is a trade where there's a lot of prideful people in it. I know I take pride in it, and I, I love it. I think it's fantastic. Uh, 
Let me see where I'm at now. Back down to Shilaji. I love that. Like, comment, and share this channel. Guys, if you hadn't shared this channel and told other people about it, please do it. Uh, if you're new here and this is your first time, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss out on anything. And give me a thumbs up down at the bottom. Uh, I know that I mentioned that, but but guys, it's what lets YouTube know that we're doing something right, that, that people think enough about it to share it, like it, subscribe, comment, all that thing. So I do appreciate that. Sheila, Sheila G, thank you so much. Let me see where I am now. I'm having fun. Are y'all having fun? I hope y'all like listening to plumbing as much as I like talking about plumbing. If not, it's going to be a long evening. All right. We are down to Cesar de la Rosa, 19, and I've worked for three companies already for three years of experience, but I'm not licensed. What would you recommend for me? Uh, Cesar, first thing I'm going to ask you is where you're located. Um, what is the licensing requirements in your area? because they're different everywhere. And I don't want to give you advice for Texas if you live in California, because they're completely different. They don't require a license except for the contractor or the owner. Uh, Joseph Fain, guys, shout out the STEM so we can help Roger or help people find Roger. See, I love that. I have got the greatest community in here, and I love having you people around. This is what makes it fun. The, the fact that I get to sit and talk to y'all, y'all get to talk to me, and like I said, tell me what, what kind of videos y'all want to see. And if I hadn't made them yet, we'll, we'll look at that and see what we can do because that's what we want to do. We want to help people grow either in the trade or their business or whatever it is. So, Josephine, thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. All right. My phones are ringing off the hook tonight. Uh, it's a good thing Amber carried the, the bat phone with her. All right, let me see, Cesar, you're welcome. Josephine, thank you. Back down to Nicole Smith. Yes, I want to stay in Florida. Fantastic. To become a general contractor, uh, I read you need experience and a mixture of school or just experience, insurance, and et cetera. Josephine, it's about the same here. Uh, to be a general contractor, yeah, there's testing. There's stuff you got to do to get that license. To be a plumbing company owner. Right now, you've either got to be an RMP, Responsible Master Plumber, or you've got to hire one that is going to be responsible for all the plumbing work that you put in. So, fantastic. I love that. Uh, Green Boater, any recommendations for biogradable septic tank additives? You know what? Uh, man, that's one thing really does not fall under plumbing here in Texas. It falls under septic system people. I believe they're actually under the Railroad Commission. Either that or no, they may be under TCEQ. Uh, yes, they may be under TCEQ. Uh, I don't know much about it. I've got friends that have se septic systems. Most of the houses in my area are on a public sewer system, so we don't even deal with septic systems. In Texas, I believe you've got to have five years' experience in septic to even work on them. So we can handle it right up into the septic tank. And man, I've installed septic tanks. I've I've installed them. I've replaced them. I've done all that. But I, I can't tell you anything about the septic system, the leach fields, anything on the other side of it. So the green butter, man, wish I could help you. Ben Farwell uh, would take on an Irish lad if he flew over there uh, for four in four years. You know what? And you will not have a problem finding a job. Uh, number one, the population over here has grown like crazy. The one thing that I will tell you is there's always going to be a need for plumbing. Not just plumbing the trades themselves. There's always going to be a need for the trades. So if you want to get into plumbing, you want to get into electrical, you want to get into HVAC, now's the time. Start studying for it, learn it, and do it because it is going to do nothing but grow. Uh, man, the population here in Texas is booming and the construction is too. So there's always work. So make sure I get the name right. Ben Farwell, I would look forward to seeing you in about four years. Hopefully you're still watching these videos. You subscribe, you know what else is going on and give me a shout. I will do everything I can to help you out depending on where you want to go. I know people all across the United States. So, and I'd love to help you. 
El Tico, how often have you found yourself working outside with plumbing? Oh, out, outside for a resident? Well, let, let's say outside in general. Uh, commercial, if you're doing commercial, you're building the building from the ground up. Uh, service is going to put you more inside because you'll be inside people's houses or inside of a building. But, you know, new construction, you're pretty much outside all the time. About the only thing that's not is towards the end when you start setting fixtures. So, and I find myself outside a lot, which really out at the airport was a pain because when it was freezing, uh, we were still outside working in the tram and it got really cold, but it was a lot of fun. Larry, will you be doing any kind of work in Massachusetts in the upcoming months? Larry, I won't, at least not that I'm aware of. I have had a company reach out to me from Boston and ask me if I would come up and do a social media training. Uh, we don't have anything secured yet, so I can't tell you that I am. But I, I will I will start posting a schedule somewhere, and I'll start letting y'all know. That way, if I am going to be out of town, uh, like those of y'all that weren't here earlier, I get up in the morning. I've got a flight out of Dallas at 6 a.m., so I can get to Los Angeles by 7.15 or 7.30. And I booked it so early, so I can do my LinkedIn Live tomorrow morning. So it's going to be pretty interesting. I may be dog tired, but it will be fun. Uh, plumbing Explain. What would you value your company at currently? What would a ballpark offer that would interest you in actually selling? Uh, that was part of my meeting in San Antonio the other day. We're doing about a million dollars a year right now when, when I've got enough plumbers. Uh, but they've got a formula, and we've kind of gone through and looked at it. We're probably worth five hundred to five hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars. That's what it is on paper, uh, and, and that's for the business. Then you go in, you, you look at tools, you you look at uh, equipment, van stuff like that. I'm willing to sell for less than that uh, because I want to keep the building, which it, I don't own it; I rent it anyway. But there's things about it I want. Uh, I like the fact that I've got a studio here. But we may eventually, if we sell the plumbing company, move the studio to, to our house. Uh, I've got a theater upstairs that I could turn into a st studio, and I would love to. So, you know, we, we know what number it's at. It, it's less than $500,000. Uh, it's quite a bit less. And we just want to make sure that we sell to the right people because I've got about 5,000 customers. And with our numbers, a customer or a company, a person, could come in and buy this company and literally make their money back in about three years, maybe four, if they do things right. Uh, we, we know where our profit margins are right now, but we also know that they could be higher uh, to someone that came in and learned to do the right thing. So, and, and I say that because even with all my coaching, we're not, we're still not operationally excellent. I wish that we were, we're not yet, but, the neat thing about it is the right company coming in is going to know what they need to do to make things better. Uh, but I tell you what, we've got a great customer base. Uh, we we're a small company. I mean, we, we, Amber told me before we left, before she left, uh, you know, she, she booked five calls this morning and, you know, we're looking at how many calls we have coming in and how many we're booking and man, we're doing a lot of things right, and I love that. Uh, the good thing is we've got a great reputation, a great name, and and we we bought this name and and some some different things, hoping to eventually spread from Dallas to Fort Worth, then Austin and San Antonio, and then Houston. And if we keep it, that may still be an option. Uh, you know, we've got people talking to us about buying, but I've also got people that I've talked to about possibly bringing in as an operations manager. I love what we've built. I'm not super excited about selling it, but I see the opportunity I have if, if I completely walk away. So, man, that, that's always a possibility. So if you're up in this area and you'd like to talk, man, we, we'd love to sit and talk with you and just tell you what all we're looking at. You know, the good thing is a lot of this stuff, like this, these videos aren't going away. And I literally saw a post this morning from a guy, uh, and he's one of my consultants, but he posted that he's got a video that now has almost a million views. He says, look, every few months, every year, something like that, I'll get a spike. 
And, and I mean, I think just lately he's got like 170,000 views. And you've got to look at that. Whoever buys this company, you know, this Texas Green Plumbing logo and the, the Yetis and, you know, I, I've normally got a Texas Green Plumbing Yeti, but I've got my Longhorn Yeti today. Uh, you know, these videos are going to be around forever. So that's going to be advertising that is always going to be there. And people are always going to look at me and know that, you know, I was here in Richardson and they're always going to be able to call Texas Green Plumbing. So, you know, we've got a good package. So I probably went on a little further than you wanted, but, you know, if you want to talk, I'd be love to talk to you. Larry, I mean, like uh, conventions, conferences, or anything like that. You know, not up there. I know that there's some, uh, and you're close to New York. There's a company up there. Oh, God. New York City marketing creators or something. Uh, Dan Norton, Dan Courier, uh, Big John. He's got a YouTube channel, You Do It. Uh, go check out those guys because they're doing stuff up in the Northeast about social media and they're great people. I don't have anything coming up there that I'm going to anytime soon. Uh, I've got Los Angeles tomorrow. I'm in San Diego in March. And then I'm back here in April uh, here in Dallas. And th those are the next three big conferences that I've got. Plumbing Explain, what do you think is the most important thing when uploading your videos? Is it the thumbnails, the description, or the tags? <clears throat> I think your, your thumbnails and your titles are the two most important things because that's what people are going to see to make them click. But the next most important thing is your content. What video are you making? And that's why, and it's funny because I was talking to one of these sponsors the other day. I told them, look, we've got about 40 steps we go through before we ever make a video. And or I say 40 steps to go through when we make the video. The last two or three are actually making and editing the video and getting it ready. But thumbnails, titles, those are the things that people are going to look at and decide whether to click on it or not. So to me, those are probably the two most important things. Dennis Conyers, how are you? It is good to have you here. Nicole Smith, would I be open to a, a day in the life video? We've actually talked about that. Yes, I'm open to that. Uh, my days are kind of crazy sometimes, and it's it's hard for me to keep a videographer with me all the time. Uh, but yeah, we, we have talked about that. And, you, you know, Nicole, that is a good one. I, I do need to do that. Uh, that's something that we will work on. Thank you very much. Because now that lets me know somebody else might be interested in seeing that. So thank you. Uh, Cesar, I've been a residential plumber since I was 17. Currently 19, live in Cali. Very interested in plumbing as a career for me. What do you recommend for me out here? Uh, Cesar, if you're going to stay in California, I recommend learning everything you have to do to become that California contractor. And I don't know enough about it to tell you what that is, but I'm sure the company and the people you're working for can. You know, it, it's very interesting that y'all can have a plumbing contractor and he decides when you're a good enough plumber to go in houses and work. Here in Texas, our plumber, every plumber that walks in a house has to have a license. An apprentice has to be registered. So it's kind of interesting that y'all get to do it because I think I could really find five or 10 good people bring them in and run training for a week or two and teach them enough that they could go out and make good money for me. And I really think that they could do a good job at it. So anyway, man, learn what you have to do to get that plumbing contractor's license or whatever license it is. Uh, your videos are her very helpful and informative, man. I hope you, I hope they are. I hope you're getting as much out of them is I enjoy doing them because I've had a lot of people come watch my videos and say, Hey, your video has helped me decide now I want to get into plumbing. I've got 14 and 15 year old people that send me messages. I love your videos. I don't want to call it, go to college. My parents want me to, but I want to get into plumbing. So man, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Roger, do you see any new services coming out that are currently out that are better or going to be better than Yelp? Yelp is terrible. Absolutely. It appears people in Dallas are unreasonable. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, you know what's funny is the reason I started learning social media is 
I got tired of paying marketing companies to rip me off. I call it uh, OPM marketing companies, other people's money. That's all they want. They would literally say, you know, how much money have you got to spend? We'll take it and do what we can for you. Uh, they never did what they told me they would do. Uh, most of the marketing companies didn't do things right. The ones that did, either I felt like I outgrew or I needed something more. Uh, I've worked with some good people, but some bad marketing companies. I went to learn social media for my company because I don't necessarily like anybody that wants me to pay them to tell other people about me. And, and that's what advertising is. So I decided I could learn to do social media. I could get out and introduce myself to people and people would know me, like me and trust me and hopefully call me if they had plumbing needs. So that's why we started doing it. Uh, and man, we, we love it. it. It's worked well for us. So I don't know that there's any other services coming out. There's a lot of services out there. Uh, there's a lot of services that for a fee, uh, you can advertise in their book or on their webpage, or they'll do things for you to help drive people to you. Man, I quit doing all that. I love doing social media. I love putting myself out there and, and networking, uh, you know, learning how to network has probably been the greatest thing for me. Uh, thank God my wife, Julie, took the time to tell me about it and convince me to go do it. And it's worked out great. But networking, building a good network of referral-based partners has been fantastic for me. And I love that. I'm sorry. I, I saw that. I'm looking at this backwards, I guess. It looked like a five. And I thought, oh, my gosh, we hit 12,500. Anyway, I was excited about it. Uh, our numbers have grown well. Uh, you know, plumbing, explain. You, you talk about how fast we've grown. The conference I'm going to tomorrow, I, I remember vividly the day that I went last year. It was Tuesday night, and I showed up, and they have a, a, a general meeting, get-together party. And I was standing there talking to a couple of people, and one of them I've actually already mentioned in this broadcast. And, and he looked at me and said, so how many subs do you have? And I said, 117. And he looked at me and said, wow, 117,000 subscribers for a plumber. That's great. And I looked at him and I said, no, uh, I'm sorry, 117. And he says, oh, just 117. And I'll never forget that. So basically a year later now, and actually tomorrow I will probably have 12.6 because we should hit 12.5 here sometime soon if we haven't already done it. And I'm just looking to see because I do get the live numbers. Uh, I'm at 12,472. So I need 28 of y'all to you know go, go subscribe. Uh, or just tell 28,000 of your closest friends. We'll pass it up real quick. Uh, so in the last year, so remember, tomorrow night I'm at the party, and I'll be at about 12.6, somewhere around in there. So that means in one year, 12,500 subscribers. So it's been a really neat deal, and I think it's because we are. We're really working at it and doing things right. But thank you all very much. I appreciate that. Uh Okay, so got you there. Video is very helpful. Got you there. Plumbing Explained, Men and Services. Plumbing Explained, OC, Orange County. Fantastic. Uh, you know, anybody wants to buy a plumbing company in Texas, they're always for sale. You can always find one, and you can sometimes find a good one. Very seldom is it that you find a really great one. Uh, but that is one way to, to get into owning your own company. Uh, and I've got somebody in North California right now talking to me about buying it because they've got a Texas plumbing license. They moved to California. They don't like it. They're wanting to move back. So they've reached out to me and said, look, what's the possibility of you selling your company? And I think that what they're doing, they're doing right. So I think they take good care of my people. So that, that's a, an option. Uh, ben Farwell, great answer. Uh, thank you very much. Love the videos. Uh, find them both educational and inspirational. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, Joe Jones. Hi, Roger. Looking to break into plumbing trade at my local union in Oklahoma City. Uh, I've heard you talk about the different veins of plumbing one can get into. Will the union offer all of those different paths? You know, I'm not sure on Oklahoma City. I don't know if they do any residential or service. 
or, or training like that. I know the union is starting to branch and get bigger and they are starting to get into residential service and, and maybe even residential construction. I'm not sure. Uh, but actually I was talking to my union actually earlier today and, you know, I know that they're looking at getting into a better training program to where they are training residential service. And I love that. I think that is fantastic. I think that could be one of the biggest things for the union. Uh, I mean, think about it. There's not a lot of big companies out there that do residential service training. And if the union can get on board with that, oh my gosh, that would completely change the plumbing industry. Uh, Larry, if I was to advise someone, would I choose working union or running your own company? Well, I did both. As you know, I own a union plumbing company. Uh, Man, it depends on what you want to do. It depends on if you're that guy where you want to own your own company and build your legacy. Uh, I didn't really want to. I felt like I kind of got pushed into it because I was working for companies that I didn't think were doing things right. And, and I wanted to improve that system. So I started doing it and working it and growing it. And, and that's what I tried to do. And and I think I've done pretty good at it. But I also, I love being a good hand. You know, one thing I tell people in plumbing is, Whatever company you work for, man, give them your blood, your sweat, your tears. Give them everything you have because they are going to invest in you, meaning that paycheck helps pay for your house, your car, your children, your clothes, your food, everything. Take pride in the companies you work for and give them 100%. Those of y'all that see me know, and I wear shirts like this almost all the time. They're either Texas Green Plumbing. Uh, I started pointing down here because that's normally where I keep them. Uh, Roger Wakefield, the expert plumber shirts, I believe in branding and I think it's huge. And it's something that I really do. I'm very prideful about, but I also did that for the other companies that I worked for. And, and that was always a big deal to me. Okay. So let me see where I'm at. Uh, Nicole, any plumbing apprentice companies you recommend in the Jacksonville, Florida area? I saw that Roto Rooter was hiring to apprentices, but I'm not sure about that route. Uh, you know what, Nicole? If, if you'll send me a message, I will reach out. I know some companies in that area that I think would probably be really good, but I want to reach out to one of my coaches first and talk to them about those companies and see. Uh, and, and guys, that's the cool thing about me is I've got connections all over the United States. Actually, some connections around the world in plumbing and things that I can do to help and and I do. I love helping people. So, you know, feel free to reach out. Leave me a comment. Leave me a message. And, and I will tell you all this. The, the last two or three weeks, my engagement in responding to YouTube has been horrible. Uh, I've had Master Networks leadership training. Uh, then I had uh, Expo. Uh, then I've been in Houston. Those of you all that hadn't seen it, uh, I went to San Antonio last Thursday morning on Ken's 5. K-E-N-S-5, they asked me to come in and do plumbing. And I came in, I did a, a six-minute session with them, and it was live. If you will, go to Ken's 5 and look at it. Man, leave them a comment. Let them know what you think. Man, I had so much fun doing that. And we really did good because before I could even get back to the hotel, I already had other TV stations reaching out saying, hey, look, I would like you to come be on our station. The problem is they wanted me to do it day after tomorrow, and I'm going to be in L.A. So couldn't do it, but we're already talking about what we can do. But, Nicole, what I would say is reach out to me. I, I, I will do what I can to try to help you find the place that you want to be. Uh, you see, I got Grayson Wagner here. Welcome. How are you, sir? What is the difference between a master and responsible plumber? Uh, a master plumber cannot legally run a plumbing company in Texas. A responsible master plumber, it's a course you take. Uh, used to, they grandfathered it in. If you were a master plumber and you had a COI, they assumed that you were already running a company and you're doing things right. So they entitled you the responsible master plumber. But what it is, is after I got my master license, I had to go take a course to get my RMP. And what it is, they teach you taxes. They teach you business. They teach you, it's a three-day course. So you're not learning everything in the world, but they taught me things I needed to know to help me learn and help me grow. And I'll tell you what, it, it was really good. So I actually took it with P. 
PC Texas, uh, Plumbers Continuing Education, Bobby Duran, great guy. Uh, and I believe the guy that taught the accounting end of it, the the bookkeeping and stuff like that, if I'm not mistaken, his name was Pepper, and he was a, a professor over at TCU, a great guy. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, Rich Cardona, welcome to the show, brother. I am glad you're here for my LinkedIn Live. Uh, man, excited that I'm going to get to see you tomorrow out in L.A. This is fantastic. Uh, sorry, I skipped down there. Uh, Chachi the Plumber, how are you? As a plumbing company owner, what do I look for when you're going to hire an apprentice? I'm thinking of going in all the plumbing shops in my town when I turn 16. You know what? Number one, Chachi, tell me where you're located uh, because that makes a big difference. But what I look for, I look for somebody that comes in, dresses, and acts professional. And what I mean by that is you don't have to have on a suit and tie or anything like that, but wear nice, clean clothes, wear nice, clean shoes. You know, I don't ever tuck my shirt in. Uh, I mean, you know, y- y- y'all can see this, uh, but that's part of my look and part of my brand, whether it's the expert plumber or Roger Wakefield, the expert plumber. This is just kind of kind of the way I roll. I believe in being laid back and relaxed. And, and it, to me, it helps other people understand, you know, look, this guy's not all uptight. Uh, so I do things that way. Uh, but I want somebody that understands plumbing. So, so what I would tell you, Chachi, is, you know, go through and watch all my videos. Subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell. That way you don't miss anything. But go watch these videos. It's going to help you learn about plumbing. Uh, if you're really serious about it, I've got links to the UPC and the IPC in here. Start studying the plumbing code. Learn everything about plumbing you can because the more knowledge you have and the better you can talk about it and the better you're going to sound and the better chance you're going to have on getting that job. Rich, good to see you here, brother. Let me see. Man. Tripshish, how are you? Good to have you here. Larry, I just want to say anyone considering Roto-Rooter Please do extensive research because I heard quite a few not so good things about them. And man, I don't know. Uh, I know that one of the commercial companies I worked for before used to call Roto Rooter. They did okay. Don't know anything about their training program or whatnot. But man, there are some open shop and union plumbing companies that have a great training program. Guys, look into what, and, and that's one thing. Let's go back to you, Chachi. Here's one thing I'll tell you. Interview the company. Don't just let them interview you. Ask them questions. What am I going to get from you? Are you going to train me? Are you going to educate me? Are you going to give me the knowledge, the skills, and the tools to do this job properly so that I can become the best plumber I can be? And I'll tell you what, you ask a company a question like that, they're automatically interested in you because you've let them know you want to become great. And to me, that's what it's all about. Uh, plumbing 101, I'm in North Carolina and have been plumbing service and residential new construction. So, you know what? Plumbing 101, I love that because you, you get a varied education. Uh, I can go in as a service plumber, but since I've done construction, I can normally tell you what's on the walls. I can tell you how I would have roughed it in. And, man, it, it's a good knowledge to be able to fall back on. Just starting to study the prep test, I like that. Uh, if you're starting to study, I recommend the UPC study guide, but let me know, do y'all do the UPC code or IPC? I know there's a lot of commonalities in both of them, but when I'm studying for a test, I like the UPC code because of the way I go through and mark up my book. And I've actually made videos where I talk about it. So if y'all hadn't seen it yet, go back and watch those videos. It will help you whether you're first getting into plumbing and you want to learn it or whether you're learning it because you want to go pass that exam. Uh, North Carolina. Fantastic. Help any type. Yeah. Fantastic. All right, Rich. Thank you. That's all I want to say. Thank you so much. What you're doing is really special and transcending, man. I love what I'm doing. You know that me, you and I've talked, uh, as you see, I think you'll recognize that patch right there, brother. Uh, I'm glad you're here. I'm going to be getting out of here pretty quick because I've got to go pick up clothing that I'm having. See, I don't just dress good, man. I starch it and look good. 
Guys, that's what it's all about. Uh, anyway, Rich, yes, I will see you in LA. I fly in Brighton early in the morning uh, so I can do my LinkedIn Live. If you're around there, I don't know if I'm going to do it from the airport or from the hotel, but brother, if you're around, give me a shout. Plumbing 101, absolutely. Larry, what advice do you have for people who want to become a plumber but has no clue where to start or how to begin? Larry, believe it or not, I tell them, look, start watching these videos. It, we, we talk about so much plumbing and so much different plumbing, uh, but that mini course, I've got a plumbing called Plumbing School or Plumbing School's Open. Uh, we've got a mini course where we talk about what kind of plumber do you want to be? And that's all it's about. It's free. It lets people get asked some questions to make them think about what type plumber they want to become. And, and that's what we do that for. Uh, you know, I've got 180 degrees on everything I've done. So that's our whole purpose for it, to try to help people make the right decisions. Plumbing 101, how or what would be the best way to get a prep course in North Carolina? Man, you know, I'd have to know more about your licensing uh, and what kind of tests y'all have, what kind of testing procedures. I don't know anything about it, so I, I, I don't want to tell you anything wrong. Uh, Nicole, I will definitely reach out. Really appreciate you being willing to help. Do I reach you via YouTube or email? Uh, Nicole, if you'll go find me on LinkedIn, you can message me through there. Uh, and guys, I, I recommend everybody who's not either connected to me or following me on LinkedIn, go over there and follow me. You can always send me a message. Uh, LinkedIn's good because I don't have near as many messages as like Facebook. I think I get 100 messages a day about Facebook, so I can't even look at them all. But I promise y'all that after we get back from LA, my plan is to start sitting down and going through YouTube again, try to get caught up. I am about two or three weeks behind on my YouTube responses, and I am so sorry for that because I love doing it. Uh, but but I will tell you all this, and, and, and I know we're getting down close to the end. If y'all hadn't done so yet, please subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on anything. Give me a thumbs up if you like what we're doing. And you can do it down at the bottom. Just click on that thumbs up button. Let me know if you like what we're doing. But also, if you know that you like this channel and you think it could help other people, I ask that you tell 4,000 of your closest friends that they need to get on here and subscribe and ring the bell too. So do me a favor, help a brother out. All right, so Nicole, fantastic. Looking forward to that. Uh, I'm glad that it motivates you. I hope you're subscribed. I hope you ring the bell. And man, I hope that you are watching the videos and learning things. That is fantastic. Uh, Dario. I believe I got that right. Dario. What kind of flexibility does plumbing give you uh, for my work schedule? I would like to control my schedule. Well, I mean, it all depends. What kind of plumber do you want to be? If you want to be a construction plumber, you're going to show up at 6 to 2.30, 7 to 3.30, 8 to 4.30, whatever hours that, that company is working. Residential is a little bit different. If you're wanting to own a residential service company, man, sometimes it's hard. I mean, look at me. It's 5.30. I'm still here, which I, I've been working all day. But, you know, like I was talking uh, earlier, I hadn't even had lunch yet, and it's 5.30. So it's kind of been a long day. It's kind of a crazy schedule sometimes. But I tell you what, I love what we do. Plumbing is a great profession, and it has helped me have an amazing life. And, and luckily, when I met my wife, she showed me how it could be better, and, and we started growing and doing those things. So, and it, it has been. Plumbing will allow you the ability to afford to do the life that you want to do, and that's really just a great way to put it. All right, let me see. Yeah, controlling your schedule is sometimes hard, but talk nerdy to me. Good to see you here. How are you? Uh, you should make a video on a tour of your truck or van. Uh, recently bought a truck, so I'd love some ideas on how you organize yours. Uh, man, I'm pretty bad about that. I know some people that are amazing at it. Uh, but that's something, you're, you're right, that, that would be a good one to do. That's something that I will work on. Uh, I like that idea. Uh, Larry, where are you located again? Can you have a dual license for plumbing and gas? I think you said North Carolina. Uh, gas fitting as well as HVAC. Man, here in Texas, 
You can have a plumbing license, an HVAC license, an electrician license, a general contracting license. You can have whatever licensing you want to get. Just remember to get those licensing the right way. You need to put your time in, learn the system, learn the process, and do it all properly. So, so yeah, you can do anything. Uh, Jared Miller. Hey, Roger. I'm a master plumber in Virginia. Congratulations. Love all you're doing. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, Jared, man, if you like it, subscribe and ring the bell. Tell any other plumbers about it. Uh, man, I, I love what we're doing here, too. Uh, I love the ability to be able to help people get into plumbing, help plumbers grow, help plumbing company owners grow their business. Man, I just, I do, I love what we're doing here. Uh, and, and this has been fantastic. Uh, okay, wait a minute. Let me see where I was. I messed up there. Yeah, supporting the trades. Thank you. Watch your videos like this. Uh, you, you know what, Nicole? I love it. Uh, and it's funny because every now and then I'll get people in here that say, hey, man, look, I subscribed to your channel last Friday and I binged watched all your videos all weekend long. And, man, I do. I love that. I go back and watch some of them. I, man, I get excited about plumbing and I love what we're doing. So, Nicole, I'm right there with you. Uh, you know, if you were closer, I'd say, look, bring over some popcorn. We'll sit and watch videos. It's fantastic. Uh, I do. I, I really do appreciate that. Uh, Larry, after becoming a plumber on average, how long would it take for you to retire early if that was your goal? Larry, it's really, it's what you want to do to invest, to have the money to retire. Uh, I used to tell kids getting into the union that if, if you know, if you're going through a five-year apprenticeship training program and you'll put up an extra dollar every year into your 401k, so at the end of that, you're putting up $5 an hour. Uh, that over a 30-year period, they could have over a million dollars in savings. Now, if you go a couple more years, I think it actually goes up to two million or more. So, man, it's it's really, it's up to you. Uh, if you can start your own company early and do really well at it and and put up money the right way, uh, don't just put money in a savings account. Learn how to invest it where you're making money on your money. Make that compound interest. That That's what it's all about. Cesar, do I like Milwaukee? I don't like Milwaukee beer. I do like Milwaukee, Wisconsin, except it's too freaking cold. And yeah, Milwaukee tools, I have no problem at all against. Uh, man, they're coming out with some cool new toys. Uh, Milwaukee is one that, you know, and if y'all saw a Milwaukee sign here, w would that upset y'all? Would y'all get mad at me if I started letting people sponsor my channel? Because that would allow me to improve equipment. That would uh, allow me to possibly even grow more. But the, the coolest thing is it would help me spend more time in the studio or getting ready for videos or things like that. Where, like I said, I was literally running calls today. I haven't eaten lunch yet. It's 530 in the evening. And I, I've still got to go home, get clothes and pack and get ready to go out of town. So I do like Milwaukee. If there was a big Milwaukee tool sign there, would that bother you? Or if I said, you know, hey, this video is brought to you by Texas Green Plumbing, Richardson, Texas. If you have a plumbing problem, go to www.texasgreenplumbing.com. Would things like that bother you? That's what sponsorship's all about. That's how a lot of YouTubers make their money to pay for what they do. And if I get out of the plumbing business and start getting into more teaching and things like that, that's what we're looking at. And I asked a lot of people earlier, they said, no, it wouldn't bother them at all. They understand it. So, you know, what do y'all think? Nicole, when you watch TV, you've got commercials. Would it bother you if, and I know that there's in-roll ads before and in the middle and after my videos and stuff like that. Would it bother you if I started doing sponsors? And trust me, I'm only going to do products that I know, that I like, that I trust. I would not ever sell out. So trust me. Uh, I'm here in Massachusetts, Larry. That's right. That's right. Yes. And man, like I said, I know people at local 12, uh, man, I, I'll do anything for you. I can just go over to Milwaukee. I mean, go over to Milwaukee. I'm looking up at Cesar's post, uh, go over to LinkedIn, follow me, whatever, man, send me a message. I, I'll communicate back with you where it's a lot easier. 
Nicole, I'm subscribed and notification bell is activated. I love that. Do I think companies would be reluctant to hire disabled vets? No, I don't. Uh, I mean, and let's say it depends on what your disability is. Uh, could somebody get out in a wheelchair and do plumbing? Probably not. But just because somebody's a disabled vet, I mean, and, and I'll tell you this, even a wheelchair, let me go back and, and retract that statement. Because I think that the right person, even in a wheelchair, that is willing to try to learn the system can get a great job doing AutoCAD and blueprints and details and stuff like that. Uh, so, no, I, I think, actually, I think most companies prefer a vet. Uh, I know most of the vets that I've brought in have been fantastic. I love hiring veterans because, man, they, they have a, normally have a great work ethic. So, no, I, I don't think they'd be reluctant at all. Melissa Alba is popping hard. Is vent popping? No, not at all. Uh, understanding it, knowing the purpose of it, it's not hard. It's actually easy to learn. Uh, you have a little more leeway there than you do on maybe sanitary sewer or domestic water popping. So, no, I, I, Melissa, I don't think it's hard at all. Uh, Larry, man, I, I love that you think the channel is a blessing. Guys, and I know I'm getting towards the end. If you hadn't done so yet, please subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on anything. And go down to the bottom and click the thumbs up. Let me know that you like what we're doing. I really do appreciate it. Uh, Chachi, what are some things I can do to practice plumbing as a 14-year-old? Uh, man, start practicing on the plumbing around your house. If you have something that leaks, Google it. Uh, hopefully, you're Googling my videos. And learn how to fix it. Learn how to fix it yourself. Uh, Always try that. Talk to mom and dad first, make sure it's okay. But yeah, that, that's a great way to do it. Sheila G, most big boy channels are sponsored. Do it. Thank you so much. Don't overdo it and do it well. And, and I won't overdo it. I mean, I've seen some channels that are sponsored by, you know, 20 different things. That blows my mind. Uh, we've looked at a few different sponsorship packages or ideas, but you know, guys, my thing is, look, I, I may have one title sponsor and then a few more under it. It's not going to be anything crazy. And I want to split it up where it's not every day. I'm just standing here saying, oh, and remember them. Oh, and remember them. Oh, and remember them. I want sponsors that I believe in their culture. I believe in their mission and vision. And I believe that they have a product or service that would help everybody on here. And that's the kind of sponsors that I'm looking for. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Nicole again, wouldn't bother me because you come off as a very humble and personable person who wouldn't endorse products or companies who you don't believe in. So I'd support it 100%. Greatness is growth. Thank you so much. Uh, and we are, we're, we're, like I said, we're, we're talking to some different people right now. Got some great things on the table that, that could come to happen. And if it does, we're going to be so excited. But I promise you the quality of the things we're doing can even get better. And, and that's what it's all about. Uh, yeah, plumber explain or plumbing explain. You don't need your damn legs to be a plumber. Uh, y you know what? That there's certain kind of plumbing you may, but I I'm telling you, there are some great jobs out there for a disabled vet or, or veteran either way that if you're willing to learn to do what it takes, then there's some great opportunities here. I know people in plumbing that sit in chairs all day long and they make good money. Uh, talk nerdy to me. Man, I'm glad you're back. Uh, do I ever do anything along the lines of giving a repeat customer something for free after so many jobs, such as a coffee mug, 10% discount? Uh, do you think it'd be a good idea? And anytime you can do something for your people, it's a good idea. And I don't necessarily look at just how many times they've used me or called me or anything like that. I look at just what can I do for people? What can I do to make them remember me? What can I do to keep me top of mind to them? So that as soon as they realize they have a plumbing problem, I'm the first thing they think of. That's what I want. All right, guys, I know it's getting close. Let me see if I can get to the end of the questions real quick. Uh, plumbing explain, I'm on my back half the time anyways. Uh, uh, Okay, I hope you're not napping. I hope you're working. And he's right. There's a lot of things that we do. And I say he, uh, he or she, Plumbing Explained is right. Uh, there's a lot of things that 
you know, we, we do, we lay on our backs. You know, I had a plumber complain about me one time because I was doing a rough end on a 52 story high rise in downtown Dallas and it was a remodel. And so it was a wall rough and he went and complained to the superintendent and you, you, know, you know what? He was right. I, I mean, I was sitting on a bucket uh, back at the time and this is probably 15 years ago. I had uh, a Walkman attached to my hard hat. I was listening to music, but man, I would get in a groove and I mean, man, I could bust out some plumbing and it was sitting in my chair all day long. So, so, so you're right. Uh, man, that you get in the right position. Yeah. There's a lot you can do. I like that. And that's what I like about this guys is, is everybody else has comments and feedback because I may not look at it a certain way and somebody else does. So plumbing explained. Thank you so much. I do appreciate that. Nicole, Side note, you seem like a barbecue and smoke brisket type of guy. I always wanted to visit Texas. Oh, my gosh. We Number, number one, I'm a cook. Uh, I'm a smoker. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't mean smoke or cigarette. Nothing, I don't smoke anything. But here's what. I've got a green egg. I've got a Traeger smoker, and I've got an Oklahoma Joe. I cook with real wood. I can cook with lump charcoal. I can look, cook with pellets. But, man, we have got some of the most amazing barbecue restaurants around here. Here just recently, I've taken friends of mine to Pecan Lodge, Heart 8 Barbecue, a lot of different places, uh, Hutchins. Man, there's so many good barbecue restaurants. I'm starting to drill now. That was not even fair because you've heard me say now three or four times I have not eaten lunch yet. But you're right, Nicole. I, I love it. Uh, I love cooking it. And, and loved it. So you ever visit Texas, let me know. Uh, Larry, fantastic. See, I, I love that. Uh, and, and Larry, like I said, reach out to me and I will help you connect with people in Boston that, that may be able to help you. I think that's fantastic. Absolutely. Nicole's right. Thank you for your service, brother. I, we appreciate that. Talk nerdy to me. I wouldn't mind if I took a sponsorship just as long as I don't do the whole gun to your head. No, 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 no. Not me. Not me at all. Uh, Nicole's also a disabled Army vet. Fantastic. Well, Nicole, thank you for your service. Uh, you know, when I got out of high school, I got straight in plumbing. Later, I wish I'd have gone to the military. I would have grown up a lot faster. Uh, so, you know, all the vets in here, you know, if you're a vet, you know, put in there that you're a vet. Let us know. Thank you all, all for what you all do. Uh, man, I... I you know, I'm one of these people, and I'm sure this will start all the controversy here. You know, I quit watching the NFL when they started kneeling for the flag. I'm one of these people. I think that when you're a professional like that, you have the opportunity. There's a picture, pitcher, pitcher for the Washington Nationals that when he goes to little towns like this, he goes to little hole in the wall bookstores and he reads to kids. He thinks reading is important. So he's using his platform to get out and read in front of kids. And I thought that was fantastic. And I watched this special and it was, it, I believe it was on Sunday morning and I was so fascinated by it. And I looked over at my wife and said, can you imagine if players from the NFL had called cities that they were coming to play in and said, Hey, look, I'm coming to play football in Dallas on Sunday. I'd like to see if maybe either Saturday or Monday, Y'all would get a venue together and invite people. I want to talk about race discrimination or, you know, disabled vets and things we can do to help them, whatever their passion is. If they had come in and wanted to speak about their passion instead of kneeling on the side of the football field while the national anthem's playing, <clears throat> they would be some of the biggest names in football today. And... So anyway, that was my little quick rant. I'm sorry uh, if you didn't like it. it. This is my show, so I get to do stuff like this every now and then. But those of y'all that did serve, God bless you and thank you. Uh, there are a lot of us that really do appreciate everything you do. So let me get back to my questions real quick. Roto-Rooter for starting plumbing. Uh, we, we've already had some complaints about that. Uh, Larry, I believe, made a comment about it a while ago. I, I think there's a lot of companies out there you could find that might give you better training. I'm not going to say anything bad about Roto-Rooter because 
I've never seen their training program, but there's always great options. Uh, Nicole, I had to sneak in a food reference. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, Kenyon Tarver, 118 Fort Hood, Texas. There you go. Uh, oh, 11B. Sorry, I don't have my glasses on. Uh, Fort Hood, man, that's fantastic. I actually drove down to San Antonio the other day. So drove down there to do a TV show. If y'all go to Ken's Five uh, for last Thursday, they had me on talking plumbing. It was fantastic. I thoroughly enjoyed it. If y'all get a chance, go check it out and let me know what you think. Uh, talk nerdy to me. Thanks for the help, man. Keep doing the live streams. Thank y'all. Uh, we've moved it up to 4 o'clock on Mondays. Hope y'all enjoy that. Uh, man, we, we love doing these. I love being able to get in here and sit and talk to y'all and find out what I can do to help y'all. Uh, what y'all can do to help me is tell 4,000 of your closest friends to subscribe. That's all I ask for. Have them subscribe and ring the bell. And give me a thumbs up when they're here. That's a big deal. Larry, thank you. I will. I appreciate that. Nicole on the USS Underwood in Jacksonville. Fantastic. Uh, man, that's funny. Uh, the USS Underwood. My nephew is a pilot in the Air Force, and his last name is Underwood. So that kind of clicked. Also, thank you for your service, Nicole. Amen. Uh, would I have one of my apprentices on the show? You know what, Nicole, I've, I've thought about that and I'll, I'll ask them about it and see if they'd like to. They're both going through the union apprenticeship, apprenticeship training program. Here's one thing that I'm wanting to do. I'm wanting to get some of the union people to come in and, and, and let me ask them questions and talk to them. Uh, perfect. Yeah. Dis DM me on Facebook, uh, or not on Facebook and go to LinkedIn, find me there, follow me, connect with me there. If you don't have a LinkedIn account, guys, you need to get one, start one. It's a great way to go your business. Uh, but I am actually fixing to get out of here. So we've kind of gone a little over our hour and a half today. Guys, if you like what we're doing, please subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you don't miss out on the notifications. But if you like what we're doing, go down the bottom here, give us a thumbs up. Leave us a comment. Let us know if there's anything we can do to help you. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, The Expert Plumber, and I'll see you on the next video if you don't get flushed. Where'd my mouse go? See ya.